Tiffany from the Battleship Iowa here today, along with crew member Don Norton. He's been working really hard on renovating the ship's oil lab, and he's going to show us the space and tell us a little bit about it today. So, uh, we're going to take a look at where the king of engineering used to hang out. And when I say the king, I don't mean King Neptune, and I don't mean Elvis. Uh, we're talking about the oil and water king, who was in charge of the oil and water lab, which was a very important place on the ship that operated 24 hours a day. Uh, here we are, uh, just for orientation, uh, at the aft end of Broadway, which is the third deck passageway that runs most of the length of the ship. You can see it runs almost 100 yards in that direction. And most of the engineering department machinery spaces are below this, um, this passageway or on either side. And the oil lab is conveniently right here where they had ready access to all of this machinery. So here we are in the oil and water laboratory. Uh, the ship carried in excess of 2.8 million gallons of liquid if you count all the different kinds of fuel, lubricating oil, hydraulic oil, boiler water, feed water, potable water, etc. So somebody had to keep track of all that liquid and not only just keep track of where it was, but keep track of how much they had and whether it was of sufficient quality or not. And that's what this laboratory is all about. There are pieces of equipment in here, uh, some represented by photos that just show some of the testing gear that was here. We have gear that was used to uh, monitor fuel tanks, a centrifuge, a flashpoint tester for fuel, uh, testers for uh, aviation fuel, uh, and last but not least, the uh, cabinet for boiler water and feed water testing, which looks kind of like a mad scientist worked here. And of course we have the coffee mess, which every work center had to have. So talking first about uh, fuel oil, uh, here are some of the tools that the uh, oil lab staff used to, uh, to keep track of things. Keep track of how much fuel was in various fuel tanks. They used sounding tapes like this, which would go down the sounding tube and you find out how much fuel is in there. You could put water indicating paste on the tape to show if there was water at the bottom of the tank. Uh, another thing you could do was use this gadget called a thief sampler, which has a valve in the bottom. You can see it moves like that when it's the striker plate at the bottom of the, um, of the uh, sounding tube. The valve opens and it takes a sample of what the fuel looks like at that level. Or you could pull on it from the top if you wanted a midpoint sample. You can see that in this uh, illustration over here. So aside from keeping track of how much fuel was in each tank, another thing that had to be done every day was taking fuel samples from various points in the operating systems to be sure that the fuel quality was good. They took it in sample bottles like this, and we'll go take a look at a location uh, typical of where they pull samples from. for the boilers. I'll just point out that here's one of the locations. You can see there's a sample connection down here. So here's one of the locations where you could fill up a sample bottle and check the quality of the fuel. So another thing that had to be done every day is the taking of lubricating oil and hydraulic oil samples. Uh, those came from machines all over the ship and they were taken in bottles like this. Um, and what you had to do was visually inspect the sample, and then there were a few tests that could be run on board. Uh, you're looking to be sure that there's no indication that there's water in the system, there's no indication of uh, particulate contamination or that something in the machine might be wearing and starting to come apart. Uh, another thing in that regard that was done periodically was they would send off samples in smaller bottles like this one, 
um, to a laboratory ashore, and the shore lab would actually do spectrographic analysis on the lube oil or hydraulic oil. And from that, they could tell if a bearing in the machine was starting to wear, for instance, it's throwing off small particles that end up in the oil, and by the composition of the particles in spectrographic analysis, they can tell that it's a bearing that's failing, and then you would know to change the bearing. So that was done uh, periodically. And now let's go take a look at one of the locations that they would have pulled a lube oil sample from. So here we are in number two engine room, looking at a typical piece of equipment that would have had a daily oil sample taken from it. This is a very interesting machine. It is a very large seawater pump. You can see that it even had a name. It was called the Bilge Dragon. And that's kind of logical because we're standing just above the bilge level, which is the lowest accessible level of the engine room. This is a huge seawater pump. And up here you have a steam turbine that drove this seawater pump. And you can see that there's lubricating oil piping here. And right over here, is a sample connection, so they would put that small bottle on here and pull off their sample and then have a look at it and see what it looked like. The operating crews in each machinery space were responsible for taking the daily lubricating oil samples, and so they would go around to the various machines, like the Bilge Dragon that we just looked at, and they'd get the samples in these bottles like this, they'd inspect them, and then they would put them in a sample rack in their machinery space like that. If they found a sample that looked bad, then they might take it to the oil lab uh, so that the oil king on duty could look at it and they might decide, for instance, to put it in the centrifuge and see if that gives them some additional information about what's going on. Um, and in any case, if they had a lubricating oil purifier that they could line up to that piece of equipment, they would do that. Uh, if they didn't, they might have to uh, stop that piece of equipment and uh, drain the oil, clean out the system, and refill it with clean oil. And this is the largest machine on the ship that would have had a daily lube oil sample taken from it, uh, one of four like this. This is the uh, number two engine room to main reduction gear, which connects the propulsion steam turbines to the shaft. Um, as you can see, it produces 53,000 shaft horsepower, which is a lot of power. But inside this gear casing, uh, it takes a lot of lubricating oil to keep everything working properly. In fact, this whole system carries about 2,000 gallons of oil. So um, this was one that they were very much worried about, making sure that the oil um, was of sufficient quality and quantity. So now let's talk about boiler water and feed water chemistry. Uh, this was the thing that probably occupied most of the oil king and oil and water king staff's time. Um, and we have recreated what their testing setup probably looked like here. Um, they were testing on the left with this lab apparatus for uh, chloride and for phosphate in the boiler water. And the phosphate was used to derive what the pH of the water was. They wanted the pH to stay up at about 10.5 because at 10.5, that's where they had the least amount of corrosion under the conditions in the boiler tubes. And they also had contaminants forming um, sludge instead of scale. Sludge being something that you can blow over the side, scale being something that attaches to the boiler tubes and causes all kinds of problems. Uh, in the middle, we have a a test cell, a conductivity meter that was used to check water samples from around the plant to see that the conductivity meters that were installed out in the plant in various places were working properly. This is, conductivity is used as a, uh, as a trigger or a flag for seawater contamination. If the conductivity starts to rise, you're probably getting a seawater leak somewhere and when seawater gets into the boiler system, that's a very bad thing. Uh, it has to, you have to take corrective action immediately. And then on this side, they were testing feed water for uh, 
feed water for uh, hardness and dissolved oxygen. Uh, hardness uh, meaning the concentration of calcium and magnesium ions. Um, that's what formed uh, sludge or scale, and so you were trying to keep the calcium and magnesium concentrations relatively low. So this was, uh, this type of activity was uh, something that could certainly keep them busy 24 hours a day. So here we are back in a fire room. You can see this is a the boiler front again, and I'll show you one of the places that uh, water samples could be taken for analysis. We step right over here, you can see that there is a, what's called a sample cooler here, which actually had chilled water running through it. Very hot boiler water came out, ran through the sample cooler, and came up and could be sampled right here. You put your sample container here, and you had this funnel to catch uh, anything that might go around it. So to sum up, uh, being a part of the Oil and Water King uh, laboratory staff, or the oil royalty as they were called on some ships, uh, was a very important job. Uh, I think you can imagine that uh, if you neglect the quality of fuel or lubricating oil or boiler water and feed water and contamination gets into a major piece of equipment and causes the equipment to fail and you're out in the middle of nowhere in the ocean, uh, that can be big trouble. You could um, lose major parts of your propulsion plant, uh, even lose the ability to go through the water altogether, lose the ability to keep the lights on. So. Um, what these guys did was uh, very important. It required a lot of independent action and judgment. We're glad that we're able to highlight uh, what these uh, folks did here at the Museum of Battleship Iowa. Thank you so much, Don, for giving us a tour of your space today. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Lots of great information here. We're actually going to be doing a at-home STEM activity next week where you'll be able to make your own pH indicator at home. So until next week, have a good one. Bye.